What is ambition? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is it a positive force that drives us to do better, to challenge ourselves, to compete with our our past and our present, and to reach forward to something greater than ourselves? Or is it a negative? We're going to look at the etymology of the word, and then we're going to use uh, the Bible in the second part of this to uh, look at some words that have been translated as ambition and see what their root meaning is to give us balance in that process. The word for the day is ambition. Let's see what we can learn about that. I enjoy studying language etymology, but the word ambition is a little bit disappointing to me because it simply means going around. And it is a word that was created to describe an observable behavior people who went around trying to curry favor and to uh, arouse support for themselves. And it was originally used as a pejorative to describe that behavior and the people who had that behavior. Only in more recent times has it begun to take on a more positive flavor that is having uh, the desire to improve oneself, uh, having a positive, competitive spirit, and working for the better good of others. It is a word that has evolved in meaning, but it was a created word originally to describe uh, what was thought of, at least at the time, as a rather negative behavior. That's just a little thought for the day, because I enjoy etymology, and I decided to look it up. Let's take a look now at what the Bible says about ambition. And depending on the translation that you're looking it up in, it's not a lot. There could be six uh, to eight uh, references, and it's not always the same word. The negative, James 3.16, New Testament. For where you have en envy and selfish ambition, you'll find disorder and every evil practice. But look at the contrast in Romans 15, 20. It's always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Look then at 2 Corinthians 12, 20. He says, and it's Paul again. I'm afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be. And you may not find me as I as you want me to be. I, I fear that there may be some discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. In Galatians 5.20, he mentions selfish ambition in a negative light. In Philippians 1.17, he said some people... Preach Christ out of selfish ambition. And in 2.3, he says, don't do anything out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in 1 Thessalonians 4.11, he says, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Uh, James, again, uh, talks about selfish ambition twice in the book of James. He talks about selfish ambition. So here is the crunch. Sometimes it's just a different word in the original language, but the idea is different too. There is a difference between selfish ambition and having a goal and a desire to do something for the common good or for the glory of God or for the good of God's people. So it comes down to motive. What is moving us? And there is no place in the disciple life for having our lives governed simply by selfish ambition. There is every place for being moved by a great desire to do or to be something greater than we are for a good that is greater than just our good. I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. 
And I hope that uh, clarifies uh, today our use of the word ambition.